Shalom. The treasure of the Lord is just waiting to be discovered. And I know we're going to find him as we seek him with all of our heart, beginning in Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So God makes a covenant promise with Abram that he's going to bless him. So Abram will become a blessed man. And through his offspring, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Let's have a look at those offspring for a moment and see how it is that God fulfilled this promise and will yet continue to bring it to pass. Several hundred years later, one of Abram's, or Abraham, who his name was later changed to, uh, was David, the king, the beloved king of Israel. And we see that he writes much of the book of Psalms. And in the first chapter, here's what we read. Blessed is the man. There is that same theme. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. He continues on, but who is this regarding the blessed man? Well, it's not just a generic man who is blessed, but it is a very specific one who is blessed, even as it's detailed for us in the second chapter of Psalms. It's like they go together and Psalm 1 and verse 1 and verse 12 of chapter 2 serve as bookends to these two psalms together. It forms a messianic psalm, a prophecy. We're going to look at that in just a moment and uncover it. But I want us to realize that uh, Abraham's descendants, here's a family tree of Abraham's. So here's Abraham. He became the father of Isaac, who became the father of Jacob. And Jacob, one of his 12 sons, was Judah. And he prophesied concerning Judah in Genesis chapter 49 that the scepter would not depart from Judah. It's speaking about a kingly line that's going to come through Judah and, more specifically, the Messiah that would come. And then we see that one of his descendants is Boaz. Judah's descendant is Boaz who marries Ruth, and together they become parents of Obed and the great-grandparents of David, the king of Israel. Well, God had made a promise to David that in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 13, that he was going to set one of his offspring on the throne and his kingdom would last forever. Who is this speaking about? Because as you look at the history of the kings, we discover that although David followed after the Lord with all of his heart, that the kings after him forsook the Lord, even to the point that there was a split in the kingdom and the ends of both of those kingdoms wind up in exile so that they are ruled over by Gentile kings. And it would seem, where is our hope? And, and what about the promise that God had made? You see, the promise that God made to Abraham was then concentrated on David with the promise that he had made, the Davidic covenant that's referred to as. But it looks as though it has failed with the end of the kingdom, even with the end of 2 Kings uh, finishing off with Jehoiachin, who is in jail, in exile in Babylon. He's been restored to the king's table, but that's still in Babylon. And so he dies in exile. And the kingdom, it appears, comes to an end. Well, we discover that in one of the orderings of the books of the Old Testament, the book of Ruth occurs before, directly before the book of Psalms. And with that genealogy, as it, as it ends off the book of Ruth, who becomes the father of David, that's the end of the book of Ruth. And the very next thing you would read in that ordering is, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Who is this blessed man? It's the Messiah himself, even as 
he, he continues writing in chapter 2. We have these chapter divisions that unfortunately seems to break up the thought, but it continues on for us, and here's how it continues. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. The Messiah is what the word anointed is, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, as for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill, speaking of the Messiah. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. This is of Yeshua. We'll see that in a moment. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. And here's the bookend of to, to chapter 1 and verse 1, where it says, Blessed are all who take refuge in him. So the one who is blessed in chapter 1 and verse 1 is the Messiah. The one who delights in the law of the Lord and he meditates day and night. He, according to the uh, New Testament gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 1, that he was in the beginning with God and was God himself. And he is the word. And that word became flesh in verse 14 and made his dwelling among us. So the only way that we can find refuge is taking refuge in the Messiah of God. The fulfillment of the promise that was given to Abraham and then to David, even to the point that the writer of Galatians chapter 3 in the New Testament says that the promise was to Abraham and to his offspring, not offsprings meaning many, but offspring meaning one, referring to Jesus, the Messiah. Come with me to the book of Luke for a moment. As the promises continue to be given... As it was concentrated further with David, now it's even more so with Mary, who would become the mother of the Messiah. Gabriel the angel appears to her and says that, uh, Don't be afraid, Mary, verse 30, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Now listen to this. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Psalm chapter 2. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 13. This is, that he, this is the one who is the offspring that was referred to, the offspring of David. He's also the one that was, is referred to as the offspring of Abraham. It's through him that we are blessed. He is the blessed man. He says, uh, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Jesus has come 2,000 years ago, and he died as a sacrifice for our sins and rose again from the dead. Listen to this now in Acts chapter 2. Referencing David, the king, says that David, in verse 30 of Acts chapter 2, David being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. 
quoting David from Psalm 110, another messianic psalm, and is found its fulfillment in Jesus, the Messiah. And the scripture continues to speak that he is the one who will return a second time and that he is going to establish his throne in Jerusalem and he will reign over the entire earth and he will reign forever and ever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. 